Welcome to my podcast, Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. I'm so excited you are here. You will hear some incredible stories about how people are serving around the world, how they overcame a struggle, how they serve. These shows will give you an edge in business and your personal life. I believe serving over sales will help you grow in so many ways. And now, about our incredible sponsor, Info. Info is a web app that puts your business on people's cell phones when you meet people online or in person. They can engage with your business or send out referrals with a button click 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The power of business is connecting with more people. Remember, your network is your net worth. Info will do this for you. I would love to help spread the word about these shows, so please subscribe to this podcast and find us on all your podcast platforms. Please share with anyone you know who could benefit from our shows. Please enjoy the show. One. Welcome, everyone, to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. And as always, I've got an incredible servant here. Uh, I was on his show a few weeks ago, maybe last week, don't remember, but it was a great show. I asked Spencer to come on my show because he's going to teach you what it's all about to be a servant. Spencer, welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. Good to, good to be with you. Well, thank you for being on. And, and I want to dive right in. We talked earlier before the show about you work with your wife for many years. How many years has it been? And how Almost, do you guys work that? Well, we've been married 36 years. And the fact that we're still together, I mean, that's work, right? I mean, staying yeah. staying married. Uh, it, I, it's really a, a tribute to her and just how flexible and adaptable that she is. And and that's a that's a skill that we all need. And I am I am super lucky to have an amazing partner. And we've been working together for the last almost eight years. And it has its challenges. It has its great benefits because we're we're business partners. We we travel all over the world together, and that's fun because I get to have my the love of my life and my partner there. And she is so opposite from me, Steve, in every way, how she communicates, how she thinks, how she solves problems. It's that, that, that creates uh, great opportunities. It can also create frustration, right? And tension because we're, we're so different, but when we, we need to solve difficult problems, we need people to think differently. So when I'm writing or when I'm talking, I have her there because she sees things that I don't. And that is a valuable, valuable resource. And, uh, and that's not why I have her on. I love her. But if you're a business owner, having people that disagree with you and think differently and communicate differently is there's a lot of different types of diversity. And that is one that it can really benefit your business if you're open. I might have to borrow her. She sounds wonderful. Yeah, she is. <laughs> I'm sure she's going to be expensive because there's a lot of value there, which is awesome. So what's and you're in leadership and coaching. So I want to lead into that. But what's the difference between having your wife as a partner or having like me as your partner or you know, just somebody outside your family influence. What do you see the differences? You know, it, it, actually, there's probably some similarities, right? I I, I don't command and control. I can't uh, tell her what to do, what to do. <laughs> and so, uh, and, and really, leadership is about influence and engagement anyway. It's about yeah. getting the discretionary effort of your team. So in that respect, it's the same. Uh, the, the challenge is, is that, we have to, you know, we have to have different, we have different relationships. You know, I had a boss one time that I learned this from that was, he was a great mentor of mine. When I was out of college, I was 27 years old. I had my master's degree and I started working actually 26. So um, my wife and I moved out of, uh, you know, our na native home in Utah and we moved to Missouri. And so, you know, it was, a, it was a big change for us. And I remember working for this gentleman, Kelvin Cullimore, great, great mentor, still, uh, still alive today, but he, he was my boss. I had a church relationship with him. He was a friend. He was a mentor. You know, my, you know, parents had, had passed. And so I have someone that was a father figure to me. So I had all these different multiple relationships with him and, and they were different in every setting at work. I had a, I had a work relationship and, you know, at church and then at his home as a guest and as a friend, I had to learn how to adapt to those different circumstances. And I think that's, that's been very helpful to me in, in my relationship with, with my wife, because I have, you know, we have our personal life and, and it's hard sometimes when you're an entrepreneur to, to shut off work and have just personal stuff and forget work. And that's hard for a lot of people to do because it's like we're in a, in a society today that's always on and that's really hard on relationships. So 
Yeah. One of the challenges that you have is when there's pressure and tension on a relationship at work that can carry over your personal life. So how do you, how do you create that environment where you relieve that stress and have a, a, a loving and uh, supportive husband and wife relationship it takes effort. Yeah. And it's, uh, you said that a number of times. And I agree with you, but the flip side is, you know, my wife doesn't understand what I do. Your wife does. So you guys come home, you, she knows exactly what you guys are doing, which is a benefit. Yeah, it is. And, and, you know, she doesn't want to do the stuff that I do. And so she chooses to do different things, which is great because those are the things I don't want to do. So we have a, you know, division of, of labor that yeah. uh, is very, very helpful. And that's where the similarities come in. If I had a partner, you know, my partner, James, and the same way we do different things. I'm great with tech. He's great with sales and, Exactly. It's, it, it, listeners, you hear what Spencer's saying, which is why he's an authority and why I want him on the show. He's saying some nuggets here that I want to remember is split your jobs. Find what that is. And if it's and, and Spencer, if it's not a fit, whack the partnership out. That's probably the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Cut your ties, right? Yeah. And and you know, that's something that we also it's harder when your your partner's your your wife. But yeah. one of the ways yeah. that we talk about that is what are what are things that we want to outsource that you're not happy in? because you know, we have soon to have seven grandchildren. You know, part of her what what just gets her excited to gives her passion in life is family and spending time with them. So, you know, when when she started as my partner, it was uh, you know, I we I needed the help. And today we're getting to a place where it's like, okay, you don't want to do that. Let's outsource it. I love that because that's what people should be doing nowadays. There's so many opportunities. I want to delve into a words that caught my eye, the team performance authority. It's very unique to me. I'm a sports guy. I get it right away. Why those, you know, why'd you put those words together under your name and tied to your business? You know, it's, it has happened to me over my career and life that uh, I've just come to realize that we need teams everywhere. We need teams in our families. We've been talking about that. My wife and I are a team and, and those that work with us. We need teams in our churches, in our communities, and of mm -hmm. course, in our businesses. And we just can't get the work done by ourselves that we need to have and, and be productive or efficient. And I don't know if you've ever seen in the Northeast, they have these competitions at the, at the county fair. They, they have what are called ox pulls. Have you ever seen those? No. Well, so these oxen weigh anywhere from three to, to, to 6,000 pounds. I mean, they're huge beasts. And by themselves, they can pull a, a sled with a stone about 2,000 pounds on it. But you put two of them together and you put a, a, a yoke on them and they can, you know, they can pull like 12,000 pounds and they're three to 6,000. So way more than twice their, their weight. And that is a, a, a factor, uh, you know, the, the team is a multiplying factor. The problem is that I see in my experience, my personal experience and what I've seen from the last three decades of uh, research and working with an organization called the, the uh, team coaching international, less than 12% of teams worldwide are high performing and that's mm. self-reported that's not just research that's listen we are not uh and, and here's what i mean by high performing they're able to produce a, a team exists for one purpose and one purpose only and that's to produce results so if you're a, a for-profit that's obviously creating the bottom line and a profit uh if it's a, a sporting team that's winning if it's a if it's a band that you're on as a team it's creating great music if it's a non-profit it's fulfilling the mission those are the results that you want to create. Well, the best teams are able to do that sustainably. And I'm not talking for a week or a month or a year, but year after year. Mm -hmm. And in order to have that, Steve, you got to have a, a culture of positivity on the team. You know, since we've been talking about relationships, there's a, there's a guy out of Seattle by the name of John Gottman. Maybe you've heard of him. Mm -hmm. The Gottman Institute, right? And, and he's been studying what makes relationships sustainable for the last you know, 30 plus years, 35 years. And it, it sounds super simple, but he says, you got to have five positive to every one negative interaction. So think about it. every time you roll your eyes, every time you have a negative critique or you're frustrated or you, you know, you micromanage or you uh, control someone or you, uh, you know, whatever it is that we do uh, that is, you know, creating 
a negative culture, you've got to have a praise, a thank you, a compliment or encouragement at the rate of five to one in order for that relationship to be sustainable. Wow. Well, people are listening and they're saying, well, that sounds so simple. It can't be that simple. It's hard. Why? Because under pressure and how many of us are under pressure right now? We, yeah. we live in, in what's called a VUCA world, right? Volatile, uncertain, you know, uh, uh, chaotic and, and ambiguous. And it's just, it, it's just constantly changing. I mean, we are, I think since 1988, uh, based on uh, an, econo an economic study, there's been 466 recessions, not just the, the, the couple you can remember worldwide, globally. So the rate of, of uncertainty, the rate of pressure on organizations to change is enormous right now. I mean, you know, people that you talk to are exhausted. Why? Because they have to change their strategy every quarter. They have to change their approach every month, it seems like. Yeah. And you need adaptability, you need energy to do that, and we're exhausted. And so under pressure, what happens, Steve, is our best behavior doesn't come out. And so we're not creating those positive interactions. And I mean, I, I work with healthcare professionals. They they deal with chronic and, and, and acute illness. And, you know, think about what they had to do during COVID. They have burnout and, and they're leaving the profession because they just can't handle the stress. Police officers, what do they do for a living? deal with the best in society? No, the criminals. And so they have secondary trauma and trust issues. Litigators, law, lawyers, what do they do? They fight for a living. You want to know why they have such high divorce rates? It carries over to their personal. Auditors, what do auditors do? They literally look for errors all day long. And that can become a habit. There was one auditor, Steve, wow. that worked for, I think it was like KPMG or some big four firm. And he was unhappy with his, with his wife, his relationship. So what did he do? He made a spreadsheet of all her faults so that he could present that to her in a logical way so that she could begin to work on him. How do you think that's going to that's gonna go over? Not very well. <laughs> yeah, it didn't have the impact he, he, he yes. desired. So under pressure, which most of us are because we're dealing with stressful problems every single day, day in and day out, our focus tends to be on fixing problems, on focusing on problems. And so a lot of the times we are mired in tasks instead of in the relationships that we need to be nurturing to maintain that positive culture to create the sustainable productivity that we need i love that's that. what that's, i'm passionate about yeah and i it, it, it exudes out of you your pores i can feel and i love that because that's what serving is about it's such a positive action no matter yeah. way it is but this segues into uh, the ultima leadership and coaching if i said it wrong you can say it again um <laughs> Leadership and coaching, and I love leadership underneath there because that's all you're talking about is being yeah. better leaders. The leader will find those five positive for that one negative, correct? They, they will if they're aware and they're they're focused on it. But as I said, that means 88% of us are not. It's a large number. It is a large number, and it's Scary. a problem. And a lot of – that's why we see – the trends that we're seeing with people, even though the economy is 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 down slightly this year, uh, there's still a lot of jobs available. People are jumping ship. They're leaving. You know, forty percent of of people in the U.S. are looking to to change their job at almost any moment. Why? Because they're frustrated. There there are opportunities somewhere else that are looking for a better one, better relationship, more positive, right. and so. That's just a, a symptom of uh, of poor leadership and and of that culture that is that is not focused on creating that sustainable teamwork. Right. Well, let's take a journey. I'm your new client. I'm coming aboard. I'm ready to go. Let's let's walk through an onboarding a journey that that person would have with you. Uh, once you've done a discovery call, it's a fit, and now you're moving forward with them. What's the next steps? So, gosh, it, it's it's different yeah. for for every person. I mean, I just uh, I, I just had one of those discovery calls with a an organization, one of the largest engineering firms worldwide, uh, you know, based out of the Middle East, yesterday, and you know, I, I I got a call from the the director of talent development and and uh, training, and you know, they have a they have a challenge. This is exactly what we're talking about: interpersonal skills, poor communication skills, and and they've taken uh, surveys within their organization where the the junior employees are frustrated because they're they're not being mentored they're they're not being treated well 
And that's not what their culture stands for. I mean, they have a history since 1955 of, of being a, a company where they develop their people. And, and so they're, they have a pain point. So that's the yeah. first thing. And then they have to find you. Well, how did they find me? It's interesting. You, this is your, your podcast is, is really about servant leadership. Well, yep. I happen to be doing, uh, you know, Lebanon right now is a country that has a, a economic disaster and people in that country are suffering. I happen to be doing an event in Cyprus, not very far. It's about a hundred miles from, from Lebanon where I was paid to go and speak. And I had some created some friends in, in Lebanon who heard that I was coming and they're like, Oh, you got to come to us. I did, I, I did some free webinars for them. I gave because I wanted to to help them. And they found out that I was coming and they said, we'll, we'll, we'll ship you over here. If you'll just, you know, can you, can you speak to us for free? And we'll, we'll pay for your, for your airfare and, and my wife, my partner. And it was such an amazing experience. They just, they just did. I I, I couldn't have paid for a, a better experience myself wow. if I'd done it. And they just made us feel at home. It was the most wonderful experience. But through that, there were some people that had attended the webinar that I had coached just giving and happened to work for one of these organizations that is a huge organization. And so I built that that rapport and that relationship. And when these problems came up, they said, you need to talk to Spencer. So they reach out. We have a conversation. They tell me about the the problem and the pain. If that's where we're at, this that's how this interaction worked. And then yeah. I, and they asked for a proposal. And so I then go put a proposal together, which I'm 90% done, and I will create options for them based on what they've asked for. Mm -hmm. And and then my next interaction will be to go through that proposal with her, make adjustments before she takes it to, to her leadership. And it's all designed to help them solve their problem. Well, that's one type of interaction. Then another interaction, uh, I was a client was referred to me and they were having a, a you know, a, a senior leadership retreat and they were having some challenges, new CEO of the company, mm -hmm. but the company has been around for a long time. The CEO worked for the company for 20 years, bought it, took it over. And he wanted some help implementing their new core values and they weren't getting buy-in. So I decided, Hey, let's do a, a, a team diagnostic. And he's like, wow, that's, that's a lot of money. I said, yeah, it is. So here's a, a day and a half is what I recommend. He says, no, let's do it for a day because he didn't want to pay for the whole day and a half. Yeah. And I said, you know, if you just do this as, as an event, then, you know, it's not going to create sustainable change. It will certainly get the ball rolling. He says, well, you know, let's just do that for now. So sometimes it's, they're testing you out, Steve, yeah. right? Yeah. And so before the retreat, he says, hey, can we do that day and a half? After all, I'd like, I'd like to do it. I said, sure. <laughs> and, you know, we, we adjusted the, the, the contract and, I did the day and a half and he's like, man, I had no idea about the value that you were going to provide. So sometimes that happens because I don't always do a good job of, of creating the value. Yeah, yeah. He says, I, I, I need you. And so, so it starts out where it's like one, one off. Sometimes it's a half day workshop. Sometimes it's a, a one coaching session with an executive. Sometimes it's a retreat. We have a huge impact and like, can you hang around and help us? And then as I get started, they're like, hey, this is working so well. Can you help this person and then this person? Yeah. It just grows. And so that's typically how an engagement works. But sometimes you, you got to prove yourself. Yeah. So and that's, Yeah, that's normal. That yeah. That's how it goes. But I love two things that you said was you customize it to them. Exactly. And that's important because you find their pain point. And it's, it, it's so simple, but people don't do that. We talked earlier how we get on LinkedIn these sales we don't know our pain point. They're like, hey, buy my product and we'll get you 200 yeah. sales. It's like, but maybe I don't, I don't need, need 200 to. sales. <laughs> See, we're brother from another mother. I love it. Yeah. And that's interesting. I love that because coach, there's a lot of coaching out there, you know. I love that uniqueness, but I also love the fact that you work with them and give that suggestion, not aggressively, but hey, they and have the best, but I'm not walking in your shoes. If you think a day is going to work, but here's what I... And you put it on the table, but Steve, I'm not, I'm not, get, I'm not getting to that point where I show that, Hey, I'm the authority and yeah. here's what you need to do until they say, Hey, I've got the problem. And, and, 
and the the trust was built. This interaction that I had just yesterday for the first time with this woman was over a year in the making. And if you really look at it, it was it's been 15 years in the making. Yeah. Because even before I started my business, the relationship that led me to this relationship was all about relationships. And it just keeps growing from from there. And so when when she calls me, then that's me being able to say, I have the authority and here's, you know, here's what I can do and I what I recommend. But let me put together a proposal. And she, you know, we haven't talked budget or anything like that. So it's just that's when, you know, negotiations happen is is like, hey, how big is the problem? What's it worth to you to, yeah. to solve that? And um, but mostly what happens if I'm doing LinkedIn, I never ask. It's if I connect, except for that, I ask for a connection. So sometimes what I will do is one of the best ways, if you want to find clients, this is a, this is something that I practice during, during COVID is if there's someone I'd like to uh, have as a potential client, reach out to them and, and, and stock them on LinkedIn. Yeah, you can do that. It's legal <laughs> and read their articles, uh, read their posts and without asking for anything, go in and tag them and comment. And and LinkedIn loves this, by the way. They want to create discussions. They don't want to have thumbs up, uh, you know, that's awesome, like you do on Facebook and Instagram and all the other crap. They want to create dialogue and discussions. And so if they have written an article or they've done something amazing, I'll go in and, and I will uh, make a comment on what I like that they said. And then I add my own ideas to that. And pretty soon they, they get a, uh, they say, who's the Spencer guy? Wow. He just, he just promoted my, my post and me and talk good about, I mean, you can cross reference people. You can do all of this giving without ever asking. And what happens is they're like, who is this person? So then once you have them respond and you have a little dialogue on LinkedIn, it's, Hey, you know, I'd really love to connect with you. I send an invite. And once they invite, uh, I don't start a selling them. I just say, you know, I'd like to get to know a little bit more about you. Would you be open to a, a 15 minute discussion? And from there, I just ask them about their business. And with five minutes left, I said, well, is there anything I can tell you? I about love what it. I do. I and they it. say, yeah, well, what do you do? And I said, well, you know, it's really too much, but I'd love to maybe show you what I do if you're interested. And that's how you, you know, you, you can kind of give to, to your theme without taking that, that can really develop into great relationships and great business. Great nuggets, golden nuggets you just threw down there. Listeners, listen to this again, because what he just told you about LinkedIn could be a game changer for your business. It did for, for Spencer during COVID uh, because you gave Still such is. a good tip. Yeah, exactly. Shout out your contact information because I sure some people want to reach out and talk to you more about LinkedIn and building relationships. Yeah, well, just message me on LinkedIn. It's uh, just Spencer Horn, and you will. Uh, I should come up. There's there's not too many of us, um, and the, the challenge I have is I'm almost to the max of followers. Uh, I, I mean, of connections, so I'm almost to thirty thousand. But uh, yeah, you can certainly message me, and and I'd love to love to chat with you. That'd be great. Right. That's awesome. Let's talk about books. Yeah. You mentioned earlier a couple of books that you really like um, that could help the audience. Well, there's there's some great books out there. And I, and I have a, a huge um, library right here in my my office. I have a couple behind me that I, you know, I refer to people a lot. But one that I'm listening to right now that I think is fabulous, and I, I actually started to listen to it because of uh, a client, a CEO that I'm coaching. And uh it's called the illusion of money by Kyle Cease. And if you, it, it's, it's hilarious because Kyle is, is his background as an entertainer, but he has just d done a tremendous amount of research and built a business around helping people and, and, and their relationship with money. And it's fabulous. It's, it's well, well, well written and a lot of fun to listen to. Gosh, the, you know, atomic habits by James clear is great. If you want to develop, those small habits that that make a big difference every day. Uh, the Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by Mark Comer is another one, which is, you know, we got to slow down and have yeah. a life. And that's really hard for me to do. Yeah. Um, and, and lots of others. So that's a couple. 
No, that's a good number. And, and audience, reach out. I'll put this in the show notes as well. And his contact information. Uh, we're running out of time here. Spencer, you're a delight. You Thanks really so are a servant. And and I, I love that about you. The listeners, I hope you got that. If you don't, reach out to me and I'll tell you why. Reach out to him. He'll answer any discovery questions. If you've got a connection for him, reach out. I'm not shy about that. I do. I did a thousand referrals last year because when I meet Brilliant. people like you, Spencer, I've already got people I'm going to introduce you to. And, that, and that's the power of doing business right, business with a servant's heart. Yeah. So thank you for being on the show. This has been a pleasure. I want to leave the audience with something powerful. What's a, I know you have one, a great tip for them that they can take on their journey and help them grow. You know, I, I, thank you. And thank you so much for having me on the show. It's been so awesome to be with you. And I sh- so loved having you on our show yeah. with, with Christian. Um, you know, one of them was the tip for, for LinkedIn, but, but uh, since you're giving me another opportunity, you know, we live in a world right now that is focused on just, we even talked about it in the beginning of the of the podcast. Just focus on your strengths, right? Um, that's good and it's bad. The bad is is if you think about sports, you know, if you play golf and do you play golf by chance ever? I do. So do you have a favorite club that that is your is your best? My putter. Your putter. Okay, great. So how many clubs are there in a typical set? 12, think, 13? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So what would happen if you were to tee off with your putter? My game would change. Game would change, right? Because so your putter's your best. So which is your worst? My driver. Your driver. So probably the if you were to really spend most of the time with your strength, your putter, you might get some marginal gains. But where you could really make a big impact on your game is working on your weakness, which is your driver. Now, the world tells us, you know, just do what feels good. Work on your strengths. Do those things that that you're comfortable doing. The problem with that is uh, we once had a, a guest that I, I just loved having on my podcast, Scott Hamilton, the gold uh, medalist. And he said something that fits exactly with, with my philosophy. And that is, he said, what is the greatest strength? It's lack of weakness. Now, the problem is, is that our strengths, it's like sugar, right? I mean, it, 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 we feel good, but... Working on our weaknesses takes energy, takes effort. And so you have to be very strategic about it. So one of the things that that I do is I help leaders identify their strengths, because that's great, but more importantly, their blind spots. Yeah. What is it that's causing them to have negative interactions so they, ha- they don't have that five to one? Typically, it's their weaknesses. It's their driver when they need to use a putter. It's their putter when they need when they need to use a driver. So it's the ability to be able to adapt. And the best leaders, based on a lot of research, are able to use all of their clubs. Well, some of you are going to be better at than others. So what do you do? You have to be very strategic about working on those blind spots. And with that strategy, that's how Scott was able to win the gold medal. His weakness was the number one skater's strength. And so he he made that a, a, a strength. He was never number one in it, but he was second or third. And then he had he added that to his other strengths. And man, that's one of the ways that you're going to create that positive, sustainable culture. That's my tip. And one of the ways that I do that is I have a, a great tool, a behavioral assessment that I use. And with that, I help leaders identify what's that one thing that they could start working on. You don't want to work on everything that's a weakness, right? Because that can be defeating and, and frustrating. So start with one. And if you just got 5% better at that, that's a game changer. That's my tip. 